Young men were convicted in connection with the death of a 15-year-old. Now, for the first time since a trial nine years ago, one of the assailants is talking about the incident publicly. New York's Jeff Simmons joins us now with that exclusive story. Jeff, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Well, Keith Mandela was sentenced to 12 years in prison for his role in the death of Hawkins in, the, in August of 1989. At the time, the judge said without him, no one would have died. Now, a decade later, we sat down with him, and there was one clear message that he wanted to get across. I'm not a monster. I'm not even anything close to a monster. Keith Mondello is searching for forgiveness, not just from the public, but from the family of Yusef Hawkins, the teenager slain in the racial attack in Bensonhurst nearly 10 years ago. Mondello served eight years in prison for being the ringleader. Mandelo did not take the stand when he went to trial, nor has he ever spoken publicly about the trial or Hawkins until now. In an exclusive interview with New York One this weekend, Mandela said he is still trying to apologize in person to the Hawkins family. I'd like to meet them face to face. Um, they would be able to uh, vent their anger to me, as I'm sure they would like to. Um, I would be very accepting of that because I know that what happened was wrong. And I would do anything that I could to atone for what happened. What happened took place at this corner on August 23, 1989. Mandelo and some friends, angry that a friend had invited black and Hispanic teens to her birthday party in the predominantly Italian neighborhood, came to the area armed with baseball bats. Meanwhile, Hawkins and some friends had gone to Bensonhurst to see a used car and they were confronted by the group. 19-year-old Joseph Fama shot Hawkins twice in the chest, fatally. Fama was sentenced to 32 years to life in prison. Mandela was acquitted of murder and manslaughter, but convicted of lesser crimes. I got a few guys together because I was threatened, and there was supposed to be a fight. And at 18 years old, you your first uh, thing is, well, to protect yourself, and it's a macho thing, and it's kind of like a protect your turf type of thing. I did not know Yusuf Hawkins or his friends. Um, that part of it was coincidental, very unfortunately. Um, this wasn't planned or, 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 or set out to do to, to, uh, to kill Yusuf Hawkins or, or his friends. Uh, and it just kind of got out of control, basically. He claims to this day that he is not a racist. It's easy to be called a racist um, and then have everyone believe it. But the fact was that the situation didn't really start out as a racist situation. Obviously, it ended up that way because a black boy got killed by white guys or, or, or a gang of white kids. Um, I had uh, black and Spanish friends uh, that were actually there that night, but for, for some reason or another, they, they didn't get arrested. The attack landed him a 12-year prison sentence, polarized New York City, and contributed to the defeat of Mayor Ed Koch and the election of the city's first African-American mayor, David Dinkins. Mandela's three bids for parole were denied, but he was able to be released after eight years from prison because of good behavior. The release and an elaborate welcome home party last May triggered a protest by the Reverend Al Sharpton. A short time later, Mandela penned this letter of apology to the Hawkins family. Murderer, Hawkins' parents, Diane home. Hawkins and that Moses Stewart, who is now an aide to Sharpton, wrote a response, but said that Mandela should, and I am quoting here, give up the names of the unknown members of the mob responsible for killing our son. Mandela said that that is an unfair request. As far as identifying others, I mean, um, basically, I don't know where, what, what that would lead to. Um, <clears throat> Ten years ago when this happened, um, you know, there was a, a, a more than a proper investigation, and they know all the suspects that were involved. Mandelo now wears this ankle monitor to ensure that he maintains a curfew, um, one of the conditions down. he must yeah. abide by until the year 2002. He is working as a clerk, attending a college in Brooklyn, and thinking now about a career as a teacher. Well, basically atone for what happened, and maybe some way, maybe work with younger kids or help people and maybe speak about racism. In the meantime, he said he plans to write another letter to the family. And I would hope that they would find more peace in possibly forgiving me. Do you think you'll find more peace? Yes, I would. Now, technically, Mandelo is not on parole, although he must adhere to certain conditions. Besides the curfew, he cannot drink alcohol and he cannot leave the five boroughs. He also is prohibited from associating with anyone convicted of a serious crime. And he says he has not been in touch with anyone who was with him on that fateful night. Pat? 
right, Jeff, thanks very much.